Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm here reviewing two gaps today, two bearish gaps today. One is FMRM, which was a new gap today, and the second one is going to be RH, which was a continuation gap from yesterday. So I'm going to go over them. So interestingly enough, uh, this the stock closed the night before. It was 33.58, and it opened the next morning down here at 28.40. That was today. Okay, on Friday. Going back to the beginning part of the day, the stock was very spready. In fact, the spread was so wide that I thought it would thin out into the open a little bit, but it didn't. It was a moving spread between, you know, one cent, which, which it really didn't hold for that long, and like 30 some cents at any one point in the morning. And even now, let's look at the spread. even holding here within this one penny. This, the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask, and that's the difference here between, see, there it just widened up again. So this is really moving a lot. Anyways, here you have the stock opening. Open on the day, boom, dropped immediately, and it went right down to the target. Target was $27, went to $27.18. In the first eight minutes of the day, the stock sold off and got within 18 cents of the target that I wrote in the room in the morning. This is, this is the reason to be aggressive in good gaps. And this really was a good gap today. Why? Because it sold off right away. You could have made your money immediately and been done. And, and then I watched this and I thought this could continue because it had a bigger number. It had the market with it today. And the market is red right now. Even at 2.15 in the afternoon, the market is actually red right now. And this stock is is I would say neutral. It really looks exhausted. It had the hard drop here and then it flipped and now it's just going nowhere. It's, it's nowheresville. In fact, this is a good continuation watch for Monday actually. But the second setup in here really ran down hard, hit hard, dropped 50 cents, never broke the low. Never broke the low. Look at that. 27.50, 27.18. Look at this area here. Literally got within 30 cents of the break. Base, 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 tried to go lower, flipped here, flipped, rallied, couldn't do it, couldn't get down, couldn't get the breakdown. But this morning it had the quick short. So it really does pay to be aggressive in the morning in good gaps. And this rated good enough to be aggressive on. I think everyone has to decide for themselves what kind of spread though they're comfortable with. Whether it's a one penny spread, maybe that's all your comfort level is, or 10 cents, maybe that's your comfort level. When I'm talking about it, though, it has to be priced in with the stop. So, for example, if the stop's $29 and the widest spread on something is $0.30, cents, then the stop has to be at $29.30. And that, that's the issue with something that has a wide spread. These mattress companies, though, this sector usually is spreading. I really thought the spread would tighten up into the open. It just didn't. But when you're putting the stop in, you've got to give it the widest spread that it has, even if it moves because you don't want to get taken out of the trade and then have it go on to work just because it hits the stop in the spread and really still holds the number. So there's pros and cons to doing things that are spready. Sometimes you have spready stocks that really just get jimongous moves. And sometimes what happens is it cuts in on the risk to reward when you have something because you have to price the spread in with the original stop, say it's 25 cents and you've got to price 30 cents in, that's 55 cents. Whereas normally it would be 25 cents plus a smaller cushion. So these are the things you have to watch for when you're taking the position. you got to look at the bid and the ask. And I always do that when determining where to put the stop so I don't get taken out and have the trade go off to work. But everyone has to pick their own comfort level with what they're okay with taking for the spread. And in MFRN, I don't know if this is widening up to $0.30 cents here in the afternoon, but in the morning it was at $0.30 cents at one point. This is a good follow-through continuation watch for next week. I don't, I don't know where this closes today. There's only two hours left in a Friday in, in June. So this probably kind of flatlines here before the end of the day. And the first morning move was it on this. One drop, one break, 18 cents for the target and done. It was the only thing this gave today, but it's a watch possibly for tomorrow. Now the other one was the RH that did a continuation gap today and is actually having a bigger move today with smaller stops than it really did yesterday. This is still selling off. Look at this. $26 this will probably get to today. All right, let's look at this. Now, so this, this was a gap today, but I really look at it as a continuation gap. So here it is. Looks like the volume really came in in this bar. 
looks like this really open here at 932. Dropped, broke, rallied back, fell off a planet. Even right now, the second, it looks like it's going to $26. So the high today in this was 28.14. This had a big, big move today. This was one of the targets I had given for it yesterday, actually. <laughs> I said $26 even yesterday. It looks like it's going to get there today. Sometimes these things make a jimongous move in one full day, the day of the gap, and sometimes they take two, three days to get there. This is having a smoother, cleaner, better sell-off today than it did the original day of the gap. It's got the volume. Unlike the MFRN, this does have a nice tight spread, and it's trading really, really well. It's trading easier and nicer than it did yesterday, the first day of the gap. And again, the market's with this too in the afternoon here for the sell-off. So this should just bleed lower here into, into the close today. So a good continuation gap from yesterday's top watch, RH, and then the MFRM, which was the quick play in the morning, and that was all that that gave. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh. If you would like more information on how to learn my Golden Gap 26-point rating method, I teach a class on it. The next class is this weekend, June 11th and 12th. Email me at melissa at if you would like more information. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.